six sigma defect metric we look at what is dpu what is dpmo and ppm and how to calculate all these three with the help of some animated examples so please watch this video till the end so before we deep dive into what is dpu dpmo and ppm let us first understand these two terms defect and defective in any industry defect and defective are the two words which are being used interchangeably though their meaning are not same defect any non conformity that does not meet the customer specification is a defect a product may have many defects but a product is not defective unless the defect prevents the product from functioning a defect does not necessarily mean that the product or service cannot be used it indicates only that the defective product result is not entirely as intended defects are the subsets of defective suppose service in the restaurant is being evaluated if the waiter greets his customers after 5 minute customer can still order food and enjoy a meal even though the promptness of greeting your customer does not meet the expectation therefore this could be considered as a defect of late greeting your customers in this service industry the term non conformity is often referred to as a defect here now let us understand what is defective so any product or service with one or more defect is a defective product the term non conformity or non conforming is sometimes referred to as defective so we use the word non conformity for defect and non conforming for defective so customers expect product or service to meet the expectations so when they don't a defect or defective is produced a def product may have many defects but a product is not defective unless the defect prevents the product from functioning so with this i hope that at least the difference between defect and defective is clear now we can focus on how do we calculate dpu dpmo and ppm let's start with dpu so dpu stands for defect per unit it can be found by dividing the total number of defect by total number of samples selected one way to understand how well a process perform is to identify the resulting defects per unit that is the number of defects per manufactured unit for example if a process step that produces an average of 30 defects for every 300 units then let's put this in the formula the total number of defects is 30 and the samples or manufactured unit is 300 so we get dpu of 0.1 or 10% so this is how we calculate dpu or defects per unit dpmo that is the defects per million opportunities so defects per million opportunities describes the average defects that is the opportunities for the defects in each unit produced opportunities here represent everything that goes into making a product each of these opportunities has a potential of having a defect so we can calculate dpmo by using the dpu that we have calculated previously into 10 ki power 6 so this formula uses the data from the previous matrix dpu it calculates the probability that a given process will produce x number of defect opportunities per million unit produced it differs from the calculation of defective parts per million that is ppm that i am going to cover next after this let's see with the same case study if if i have the same case study where i have average defect of 30 defects for every 300 units then 
my dpmo will be dpu into 10 ki power 6 so dpu i have calculated as 0.1 and if i multiply by 10 to the power 6 we get dpmo as 10 to the power 5 ppm ppm stands for part per million and accounts for the number of defective parts per million produce it is different from the dpu or dpmo that we have calculated in the previous cases we were calculating the defects but in ppm we are looking at the defective parts it does not account for the fact that the multiple defects may affect a single part. One defective part even with multiple defect count as a single defective. We can calculate PPM as defective parts in a sample into 10 to the power 6 divided by total sample selected. Let's take a case here. If a process step that produces average of 7 defectives for every 10 units, then PPM would be 7 into 10 to the power 6 divided by 10, where 7 is a defective and 10 is the number of samples. So we get PPM of 70,000. So in this case, 7 defective unit, please remember it is the number of defective and not the number of defects. Out of 10 units that produces a PPM of 70,000. So now that we have calculated DPU, DPMO and PPM, how do we convert it and see what sigma level we as an industry are operating at? Let's see if this is my 6 sigma DPMO and yield level and this is my 6 sigma graph. So as the 6 sigma level increases from 1 sigma to 6 sigma, what is the DPMO we have and what is the yield I am getting? So for 1 sigma, my DPMO will be around 6,90,000 and yield will be around 30%. 2 sigma, DPMO of 3,8,500 and yield around 69%. 3 sigma, 66,800 yield around 93.3 percent. 4 sigma 6,200 dpmo and yield around 99.37. 5 sigma 230 and yield around 99.97. 6 sigma 3.4 dpmo and yield around 99.99997 percent. So if you know what is your DPMO level, you can calculate at what industry level your company is operating. Normally, if you if an industry average is around three or four sigma level, and the world class of benchmark companies are operating at six sigma. But if you are at around one sigma or two sigma, that means you are still not very competitive in the market. You need to upgrade your quality system. So that is all I have on this the DPU. DPMO and PPM. So that is all I have on this video. If you like it, click here to subscribe. Do hit the like button as well. Share this video with all your friends on different social media platforms. And if you have any specific sessions or topic for my next video, you can let me know in that comment section below. And please let me know your thoughts as well on this particular video.